Welcome everyone, I am Savu, your game devil, and in today's Unity tutorial we are going to create a simple drag and drop system that I will also use to demonstrate an inventory system and a puzzle game. If that sounds interesting, make sure to stay till the end and see the whole drag and drop system in action. The first thing you see on my screen is the setup that I've prepared. I use a canvas with render mode, screen space camera, and I also make sure to have the event system that comes with it on my scene. It is very much needed in order to detect our mouse inputs, but more about that in a moment. For the weapons and slots, I just use image game objects and place them accordingly on the canvas. By the way, the swords I'm using are all created and provided by Rapinem, and if you want to see more of his amazing work, I have his socials and portfolio in the description. Ok, back in Unity, we now create a new C-Shop script named Drag and Drop, or however you like. First of all, we are going to need the library UnityEngine.EventSystems in order to use some interfaces that are in there. These interfaces are the I point down handler, the I begin drag handler and the I end drag handler. In case you haven't used interfaces before, you can select them with your mouse and you will see the light bulb on the left go up. Click on it and select implement interface. And as easy as that, the whole function just appears and is ready to use. We are doing the same thing for all interfaces and to show you how this works, I will replace the code in the functions with a simple debug.log. On pointer down, we will right click since this is called as soon as we click with a mouse. On end drag is called when we release the mouse click and on begin drag is called as soon as we are dragging the game object around. Ok great, so we have set up the basic system but in order to use it we will need another interface called iDrag Handler which is called on every frame we are dragging the sword around. Now back in Unity, don't forget to assign the script to all the game objects that you need to use the drag and drop system for. Awesome, we are ready for the first test and I will have the console over here to see our debug.logs. Ok, all swords detect the click and when I move the mouse the on drag function is triggered. When releasing it you also see the end drag. Again, click, on drag, end drag. Now that our events work correctly, we also need to actually move the swords with a mouse. With that said, jumping back to our script, we use a new rect transform variable and assign it inside of the start function. Next, in the on drag function, we increase the anchored position by the delta of our event data. This is basically the amount of movement we did with a mouse since the last frame while holding the game object. Now the sword follows our mouse, but it looks kinda strange, right? This is because the scale of our canvas is not set to 1, and that's ok, since it needs to adjust to the screen we are currently playing on. A quick fix though is to have the canvas stored in a variable and divide the event data dot delta with the canvas dot scale factor. Ok, now in Unity we have to manually assign the canvas to the public variable and we are done. Alright, we fixed the movement pretty good and our drag and drop system works great. Well, to have the swords appear in front of the slot, the game objects should be listed after the slot objects since the canvas renders its children based on their order. Ok, now it looks as intended and we can move on to the inventory system and the puzzle game example. For the first, create a new script, I name it slot script. In here we are using again the unityengine.eventsystem library and inherit the iDrop handler interface, just like all the other interfaces so far. To see when this is called, we can test it with a debug.log saying item dropped. In Unity, assign the new script to all of your slots and hit play. Noticing something? Yes, it's not working at all. The item drop message never appeared, but why? This happens because as long as we hold the item with our mouse, it blocks the raycast from hitting whatever is underneath, so we never actually interact with the slot. This may look like a lot of work to fix, but trust me, it's pretty straightforward. Select all your swords and assign a new canvas group component. There you will see the interactable boolean, which we are going to adjust in the drag and drop script. In here, we get the canvas group component and on begin drag, we set the block raycast boolean to false. On end drag, we reset the block raycast to true. Ok, with that done, let's see what happens. Great, we can click, we drag and finally drop the item in the slot by calling the right functions. 
The next step is to properly adjust the position of the item inside of the slot. So open the slot script and check if event data dot pointer drag is not null. Pointer drag holds the data of the game object that is currently dragged and we have access to whatever component it has. In this case, we access the rect transform dot anchored position and make it equal to the anchored position of the slot. Perfect, well, almost, since the sword snaps to the slot, but the position seems a bit off. This is not the fault of our code though, and to fix it, we open the sprite editor and make sure that only the sprite we need is cut out and that the pivot point is in the middle. Now it looks perfect, and playing around with this also is a lot of fun. That's why I also want to show you how to make a puzzle game in Unity with a drag and drop system we just created. For the setup, I placed a black shadow version of our sprites inside of the slots. Can you already see which shadow goes to which sword? If yes, you must hit the like button right now and you shall receive a cookie. Ok, the first thing we need to do is to hit the like button, I mean assign a new public integer id variable to both drag and drop script and slot script. Then we check if the id of the sword is the same as the id of the slot and if so, we will print the message correct. Otherwise, we print false. Let me quickly give ids from 1 to 4 to all swords and the correct id to the slot with the same sword in it. Be careful here, since the shadow id needs to match with the actual sprite id. Ok, first let's be smart and find the same form to trigger the correct printing. Now we try again, pretending we are dummies. And there you go, we are false. Awesome, it's time to expand our unity puzzle game by storing the starting position of each sort in a vector2 variable. With this piece of info, we can create a public function that resets the position of the game object to its starting position and you will see why we need this in a moment. Switch to the slot script and paste the line where we change the anchored position in the if statement where both IDs are the same. In case they are not, we want to snap the sword back to its original position and here's where we call the reset position function from before. You see, if we are correct, the sword snaps in the middle of the slot, but if not, it returns to the starting position. You can also still place them wherever you want in the scene, like in a real puzzle game, until you find out in which slot it belongs. And that's it, I hope you enjoyed the video and learned how to create your own inventory or puzzle game in Unity. If yes, it's really worth it to click on the subscribe button to see even more game development videos whenever you open up YouTube. If you have questions, I will answer them in the comments below and to continue the talk, join our imp unity on discord and become one of our imps. With that said, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Ciao!